If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. I'm not coping. You're coping. Welcome back, guys, to another deck profile. Today we're doing DBT09 Nirvana Java Overdress Crossover Dress Hybrid deck profile. I, I really don't know how else to describe this deck other than the fact that it shouldn't work but it does, and it's because Bishrode wants you to play a hybrid deck, which is weird. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into the deck profile and we can kind of maybe explain on the way. Starting off with our ride deck, we got our usual ride line here. I got my nice little world's hot stamped sunrise egg because it's so darn cute. And then we got our Reno, which uh, lets you search out a trick star if you ride Rayu on top of her. And then we got Rayu, which is the one where if you ride Java on top of her, you can look at the top seven, add a prayer dragon to your hand, um, you know, kind of get some consistency there. And then we got Nirvana Java, which is our main ride for the deck. This is where you can discard a card from your hand to grab a trick star and a prayer dragon from drop. And then the second skill is when it attacks, you can count us one to restand a unit that is in the crossover dress state. So multi-attacking. There is no power added to that, unfortunately, uh, but restanding units is still really good. So now we're going into the main deck. We got our three copies of Java because we want to persona ride. And I did say this was a hybrid deck and we're using overdress units. So starting off, Virena Valiente. So Virena Valiente, uh, it overdresses over Trickstar. Dina gets 5k for each original dress in this because uh, it can overdress into Trickstar or a grade three or less unit that is already in the overdress state. When its attack hits, what's well, on the rear guard, you can kind of blast one, discard a card to restand it so it can swing again for multi-attacking. It's just another overdress target. Um, we only run one because we have a really easy way to search out overdress units now, which is really cool. It's, uh, it's Valiente, you know? It's got some, some really cool Chrono Jet aesthetic to it. We're moving on to orders. I am running two copies of Clad in Prayer. And this is the card that I know people are like, ugh, don't run it, it's bad. But you know what? This card is cool. What Clad in Prayer does is you cast it if you have both the crossover dress and an overdress unit on your board. The overdress unit gets the ability Red text, when your Vanguard attacks, once per turn, you can stand this unit. And then the crossover dress unit gets 10K. So I know while the crossover dress unit kind of like got the, the worst end of it by getting, you know, the power instead of like some other cool ability, giving the overdress unit the ability to just restand when your Vanguard attacks is really dope. So I'd say that's a really cool card and it actually goes off more than you think. But I'm only running two because I am running one copy of Gratis Gratidale. We are coping so bad with this deck that we need Persona Ride that bad. So what this does is you can only run one in the deck. It's basically your Persona Ride. So you play it, and if you're on grade three and you have not ridden this turn, you can activate Persona Ride, draw and give your front row 10K. So this is if you don't have your Javas in hand and you just have another card to give you access to that. If you don't have Gratis Gratidale, you can run another Clad in Prayer. That's that's probably what I would be doing. Or you can run another Valiante or another other cards that you know, if I'm not running full play sets of, you can try and run those as well. But this is what I've been working with. Now we're moving on to grade twos. Starting off with some more overdress units, I'm running three copies of Arcs. Like I said earlier, if you don't want to run a Gridale, run another Arcs. What Arcs does is you overdress over Trickstar, counter blast one, draw two cards, and it gets 5k. We're running overdress units. This is as good as overdress units get. You know, draw two. We're going into our crossover dress units. We're running three Garu Virena. Garu Virena is our one that uh, makes it so your opponent has to guard two or more at a time while it's in the crossover dress state. It also gets 10k continuously while in crossover dress. You can run a uh, Galandite to make it even bigger. So that way, you know, you're swinging with a big number and then Clad and Prayer makes this bigger as well. And this is your restand Targo Java. So it's just, just an overall really good offensive card. The reason I'm running three is because you can recycle it with Vilsfirena. So Vilsfirena is when you crossover dress, you can choose a card that's not this card with the crossover dress ability and add it to your hand. So if this is in your drop, you can add it back and also has a defensive skill. So this gets continuous while in crossover dress plus 5K plus 10K shield. So that way when you intercept with it, you know, you got a little 15k shield there. So that's also really nice. It also cannot be targeted by your opponent's card abilities while it's in crossover dress. So it cannot be imprisoned or retired or bound. So it's just a nice little shield to have on your board. And it's another crossover dress unit. Prayer Dragons for grade twos. Got our Galandites. Uh, Galandite is kind of pretty much like your go-to, in my opinion, like 5k to 10k power. 
is just really helpful no matter what you're doing. Can't go wrong with Gallandite. I don't really like the other prayer dragons because they either cost a counterblast, they make you discard, they just kind of, they don't really add any power. The other prayer dragons aren't just really doing much or they just help you fuel soul and you don't really need soul in this deck for the most part, but if you want to play a more like Bower of Irina variant where you're using a lot of soul to blow up your opponent's board, you can do that as well. I uh, haven't tested that out, but uh, that's something to keep in mind for the future. But uh, when in doubt, Gallandite. Gallandite's pretty good. MVP of the deck, which is our Stragelios. It's a new prayer dragon that came out in DBT09. This card is definitely a play set. Uh, I would say no matter which um, Virena deck you're playing, maybe you run this as two or three, but this is just a really, really good card. So what it does is when it's placed from hand, you can discard a card from your hand, search your deck for a unit with the overdress ability or a trick star and add it to your hand. It's also a prayer dragon. So what it does is when it's become an original dress for crossover dress, you can counter blast one, choose a trick star from your drop and call it to rear. So while that does cost a counter blast, it does help you set up so that you can kind of get off your clad and prayer if you want to do that for the turn. So it's not, it's not a terrible second skill to have. And I, I have used it in some games. I do really, really like this card a lot and I'm really excited for the support in set 10, just with all the, you know, the counter charging that we're getting that we don't have right now is gonna make this card a lot more consistent. But for right now, this is just pretty much how you're searching out your stuff. Going into our Sentinels, I'm just doing our traditional three PGs and our one Elementaria because it gets around guard restriction like Flagberg. It's free against grade four decks. You can't get an Elementaria, just run your four uh, skill PGs and that'll work just fine as well. But if you got it, run your Elementarias. And then our main guy, our dude, the card where this whole deck wouldn't work without it, Trickstar. He has an ability where he can't be chosen, um, but you run four because it's your discard fodder. You bring it back from drop. And uh, you know, it's it's the guy, it's 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 Trickstar. So now we're getting into triggers. Starting off with our over trigger, we're doing Drag Veda because restanding your Vanguard to, you know, then counter blast and restand a rear guard again is really cool. Um, so I like I like Drag Veda because restanding your Vanguard is fun. And then I'm running uh, Burning Flail because it's a trigger with the skill. Um, you don't really need it like genuinely. You could really just get away with running vanilla crits because you don't really use the soul in this deck whatsoever. If you don't need it, you don't have to, but I always say that triggers with skills are better than triggers without skills. So you can do with that information with what you will. Uh, and then I'm running, whoop, put the foil on top. Four more vanilla crits because crits win games. Then I'm running three of the shield draw. So what this one does is if your opponent's at grade three, this gets five shield. We're running this and not fronts because I need hand. <laughs> you would rather run fronts, you can do that, but I feel like this deck really needs the hand. We got our four Ronas and our one Draco Kid. Draco Kid is where if your opponent gained a crit by a card ability instead of by a trigger, you can give an extra 15 shield. That's really good against a lot of these decks these days. Going down the list, we got Ava, Bazarga, excuse me, Barrow Magnes, plenty more decks I can't really think of. There's like other decks where rear guards gain crits as well. So it comes in handy in a lot of uh, matchups. So especially since we're in the Ava jet meta right now, this can come up and be helpful. That is our trigger lineup. And that is it for the main deck as well. Thank you all so much for sticking it out so far. Um, I'm actually just really excited the fact that this, this deck's like main form of overall consistency relies on the fact of, did you draw your Stragilo just so that you can call it and then you can search out your arcs and then maybe you can uh, crossover dress using your trick star into this over something. And then you can use Stragilo to pull out another trick star from drop if you got it. And then you can overdress, whoops. And then with that little combo, you can Clad and Prayer that way. This isn't the ideal to overdress units. You're probably gonna end up working with something that looks more like this realistically. And sometimes if you're lucky, it'll look like this. This is kind of like the ideal set up for the kill turn, if you will, your Clad and Prayer, your Javas, your double stack Valiente, if you got it, even just one stack is fine. Just for that pressure of like, you know, if this hits, this restands, this is gonna restand and it's got all this big power from Clad and Prayer and you know, your opponent has to call two at a time. It's a fun deck. I'm actually having a lot of fun with this deck, but it's gonna get a lot better in set 10. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.